Besides heavy deadlifts, trap bar shrugs are my favorite way of building massive traps naturally. And right now, I'll explain why. Starting with the shrugging angles. Did you know that the upper trap fibers don't run up completely vertically? They actually come out and in, which indicates that shrugging with the arms outside shoulder width apart is optimal. Interestingly, EMG research validates this, where a medium grip expresses the highest upper trap activation. Of course, this can be done with a straight bar, though there are problems I'll be addressing later, but going back to trap bars, they're literally tailor-made for this purpose. The handles are built wider, plus the neutral grip itself forces the load to be more in line with our center of mass. This creates high stability and nine out of 10 times superior form, given the fixed arm abduction. So you'll not only feel the traps working that much more, but overall technique should be smoother while allowing you to lift more than any other free way to shrug. And that's a big deal since the traps are extremely resilient. Like, have you ever seen a natural terrace traps from rack pulling a thousand pounds? What about shrugging six or 700 pounds? Yeah, me neither. And that probably means you're safe too, as you won't need that much overload to begin with. So all this galaxy brain stuff aside, as Bald Omni Man would say, trap bar shrugs are a non-gimmicky variation that feature excellent biomechanics and loading potential. Anyway, let's backtrack a bit and cover more specifics and benefits. One of the secret benefits of trap bar shrugs is the free grip volume that's accumulated, which is hugely beneficial to anyone who regularly uses straps on rows and deadlifts. The extra work really complements your poles, and unlike regular dumbbell or barbell shrugs, you can actually go hundreds of pounds heavier without needing to strap up. Whereas straight bars may limit you at around two and a half plates, unless you got godly grip strength, and for dumbbells, somewhere in the 100s, but even then, it can be difficult since they roll on your hands. Now, this isn't to say you can't grip at all or that straps are bad. All I'm saying is there's now a necessity factor. And even if you're theoretically fine, I guarantee your technique would still suffer for it. Or you'd have to use significantly higher reps and maybe that's not what you wanted. Whereas with the trap bar, you can shrug in the 400s easy and never have this issue, unless you actually have a grip weakness to which this would correct, or at least most sets and ramp ups can be done raw. Furthermore, beyond this grip discussion, when you're shrugging with subpar alignment, at some point, absolute load itself will almost always distort things. See, internal rotation coupled with enough overload directly causes two things. One, less range of motion since it's hard to bring the traps as far up or back as possible. And two, forcing torso lean for the way to stretch and bar clearing. But that unnecessarily loads the lower back, which is already a precious recovery resource. Plus, if you don't remain in that awkward position, you're literally one step away from smashing your family jewels to TRT status. So in the end, it's super common to end up with this chicken head bobbing technique, which not only looks like absolute garbage, but feels that way too. At least with the trap bar, our shrug is upright, and allows for more scapula freedom. So even if desired, we can retract more, which better stimulates the mid to lower traps, which is also what you do on rows, by the way. Plus in general, you're not rolling into the shrug. And if you don't believe me, guys, please load up another plate or two and do power shrugs. Besides leg drive, the concentric and overall angles should look almost identical to your lighter sets. Basically, this motion is stable and repeatable, and that's a huge deal. Finally, let's discuss programming and extra cues. To get this one out of the way, it should be obvious that I'm a big fan of power shrugs since they maximize what we now call stretch mediated hypertrophy. And I don't find them to be dangerous either, especially if you're not ego lifting or are still able to get a full squeeze at the top. So if you can't do that, it's obviously too heavy and we can't blame the exercise. The max one should power struggle for the strict is two plates, and that's being generous. That said, even though this style is my preference, I now believe it's a mistake to only use chi reps, which is a position I've held since 2019. A combination of super strict, regular, and slightly loose is the best way to go. And of course, these are all variations we can use without changing the trap bar implement itself. So here's what I found out over the years. It's probably a good idea not to power shrug more than once a week as they do create additional fatigue. At the same time, 
Not much volume is actually required. In fact, I personally use them as top sets, either to open my shrug workout, like in a pyramid setup, or immediately after the main work, thus being pre-fatigued. Either way, it's never more than one or two sets. Otherwise, the only other way I'll cheat is for pushing the boundaries of failure. So rather than stripping off load, I'll just use leg drive until my traps can no longer control the eccentric or bring the shoulders anywhere close to the ears. Now on the opposite spectrum, we got the textbook version, which I used to bash, but now understand the nuances. This includes pausing at the top and letting the weight stretch you briefly at the bottom. What's notable here is that only these two segments must be paused. A slow tempo is not required. We're simply cutting out jerking and self-limiting our numbers. This teaches the correct movement pattern and is nice to throw in when your traps are already taxed from deadlifts or previous work. They're what you do on those less enthusiastic yoke training sessions or as a second trap exercise. After all, it certainly beats skipping direct work and for many lifters, this honestly might be enough. Just don't be lazy with progressive overload, all right? And for reps, it doesn't matter, but I usually don't go above 20. Three sets of eight to 12, 12 to 15, or 15 to 20 is my go-to. And for cheat reps, I would not advise anything under five. Also, a pro tip is to bend your arms while shrugging, which can enhance peak contraction since we get a bit more range of motion, though you'll probably only do this on lighter sets. Lastly, if you want strength goals, 225 for 10 is a great starting point, and each 90 pound jump after that point would represent a noticeable increase in mass. But honestly, a better marker is to shrug 1.5 times your bench press for proper upper body balance. Credit to Bill Starr for that one. And with that said guys, you should honestly be all set. If you finally want some swole traps, it's time to trap yourself in the trap bar, then shrug off.